Hey, Master Gardeners and kids. I got a pretty cool set of amphibians here that I want to show you. Some that we found, and certainly you're probably listening to them right now, outside in your yard. I'll kind of demonstrate the sound. You can't watch me do this. I have to hide myself because I look goofy, but maybe you've heard that sound before. Well, surely enough, sometimes that's the gray fog, and here he comes up the side of my container. The gray fog is easy to know by he's these bright orange spots hidden underneath of his hind legs. Oh my gosh, very easy to see that. That's clearly an indicative mark that you have the gray tree frog. They can come in different colors. They can be gray. And a really cool fact about the tree frog is he can change colors. He can be brown, I mean grayish brown, or he can have mottly marks and he can even be green, like, like this color green, bright green. And then of course he has suction cup feet. Whoa, come here little bucko. He's quite a jumper. This is a nice big one. He can get a couple inches inside. And I'm sure you've seen before those little suction cup, I don't want you to look too close at my fingers, but he's got suction cup fingertips, which actually can cling. He's got particularly long fingers as compared to an American toad, a little bit longer and more slender for clinging on. And the distinctive mark is on, on the side of his eyeball here, on this side of his eye, there's a little dot. Come here, little guy. He's got a little dot right underneath of his eye, which I'll point to slightly here. That little white line right under his eye right there, that's another indicator that you've got the great tree frog, which is a common common frog. So he's kind of cool. He only um, makes a short for a short time. And that's an indicator. He's an arboreal frog, so he wants to live somewhat near stream, wet areas. He tends to be in shrubs. He tends to be up off the ground most of the time. He does have to return to the ground for breeding purposes, so they want moist areas. Like all amphibians, they have um, their tad tadpoles in their youth. But anyway, there's your gray tree frog. There's a good view of him. He's sitting kind of quiet. Not good for you to hold him too much because there's oils on your hands that are not good for him, but pretty little markings on him. So there, he's sitting so nice and still for the camera. Good job, little gray frog. Good job. I'm gonna put you away because I want to show you the other one. The other one goes <laughs> for 30 seconds. I want you to practice that at home because it took me a little bit of time to master that sound. But this one I found in my window well in my basement. Now, you know what he's gonna do. As soon as I pick him up, he's gonna do what on me? He's gonna pee on me because that's one of his defense mechanisms. This is your basic American toad. He can get up to three inches. This is a nice happy one from my yard. He's got these two big warts right behind his eyes. He has warts and marks on his legs and all and patches. And his fingernails are not as long because he doesn't climb trees and hold on. But one, I'll give you some cool facts about frogs and toads. Did you know that their tongue is connected at the front of their mouth? Like yours is connected in the back, so you can stick your tongue out, but a frog and toad can't do that. His is attached in the front, so it's more like your elbow. His tongue is attached to the front of his mouth, and when it comes time to catch an insect, he goes, Whoop! and he grabs it like that. So you can really do some cool things. Look it up on the internet, kids, and just Google slow motion toad catching an insect, and you'll see that thing flop out. On the tip of his tongue, there's like a honey sticky substance. It's just as sticky as honey, and that's what the insect will get clung to. And then when he swallows, his eyeballs drop down, his eye socket drops down into his mouth. And he uses his eyeballs to swallow. So when you feed a frog or a toad, you'll always see him go, like that, because his eyeballs have an important job to help him swallow. But there's your American toad, different shades of browns, different patterns, highly varied. Both of these frogs can be found, oh, there he goes, he pee peed. They can be found all over the East Coast, all over, and they're such beneficials because they're feeding on all the insects around the, your house. And my girlfriend has a pet frog, and she actually feeds it little baby mice. So even little baby mini mice. So it's amazing how many different things they'll eat. But Pretty cool to hear these in the spring months. This is a real pleasant froggy toad call long term. Now, let me show you. If you want more toads, let me show you how you can in invite them into your yard. You can use a container. You can make a toad abode. Look this up on the internet. Simply just take, this is just an old plastic pot that I use for containers. And I'm just cutting the bottom with a pair of scissors and just cut a doorway inside of it. 
And the fun thing for kids to do, get some acrylic paint and paint it. You're just gonna put it in your yard, just put it down. I would always get a rock of some kind to weight it from the top. So you need something kind of heavy so it doesn't move around. But if you hook that or nestle it in the side of your house somewhere, up against the brick or someplace hidden, you wouldn't believe it. The toad will actually live in it. It happened at 4-H camp. We went back and inspected them months later and sure enough we had a toad in one. So there you go. Have some fun. Make it a toad abode.